Yo guys, what is going on? JPS back with another video, and today we're gonna be reacting to how traditional haggis, haggis, haggis is made in Scotland. Um, and this is Regional Eats, which is a series provided by Food Insider, I'm pretty sure this is. And I reacted to a similar video, which was how black pudding is made. So if you wanna check that out, make sure you do so. But yeah, if you guys are new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and let's get right into this. I've never, well actually no, Haggis has been mentioned in a couple of the videos I've reacted to in the past, but I don't know what it is. So, here we go. To all my Scottish viewers out here, hopefully you guys enjoy this. This looks very interesting. <laughs> we're in Edinburgh, Scotland, and we're about to visit Max Sween, a third generation family run haggis producer. What we're about to see is a traditional haggis, which is encased in an animal tribe and stuffed with meat, spices, salt, and a few more ingredients. So let's go and find out which ones. I've always been curious about haggis and finally I get the chance to travel to Scotland to find out how it's made and why it matters so much to Scots. Leading me in this journey is James Maxween, who has turned his grandfather's butcher shop in Edinburgh into one of the most successful haggis companies in the UK. Being a, a boy in a family business, I, I never get tired of eating haggis from when I was old enough to understand what my dad did to, you know, 40, 40 plus years later. I love haggis. I love haggis. There is no steadfast rule as to what specific animal has to go into haggis. At Maxween, the base is lamb lungs and beef fat. I'm the third generation managing director of McSween's. We're still using that same recipe that we, we started with in 1953. You can have a pork haggis, you can have lamb, lamb and beef, you could have a lamb, beef and pork. There's some people make venison haggis. We've made venison haggis in the past. But as long as this business has been making haggis, we have always made lamb and beef recipe. How many lungs are there in Oh, hundreds, hundreds. <laughs> they've all been, they've been, it's a big block of meat that we guillotine, but you know, there's, there's hundreds. Okay, and how, how many haggis are these going to make? Um, by the time Connor's lifted everything for this batch, it will make wow. 2,000 puddings um, or 4,000 portions. Each pudding is meant to serve two to three people, so that is about two portions per pudding. It looks like marble. Yeah, it's like... Um, it looks like the uh, Tuscan marble. Uh, travertine. Oh, Pink travertine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some manufacturers mince a lot of their meat raw and then they cook it in the casing. We don't do it like oh, that. Okay. We cook our lungs. Um, others, some don't. People, some don't. Oh. So cooking it makes it our haggis light and fluffy. So we... It smells like liver, actually. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> it, will, it will smell like it. It doesn't taste like it. And lungs, are they... What, they are safe to eat, I guess. But yeah. wh why is it that uh, they're banned in some countries? According to... Canada and America, they think that you're going to contract tuberculosis. Pretty much every butcher in Scotland will make haggis. They are, we, we eat a huge amount of haggis in Scotland. Yo, I got to say something. This was actually in the banned foods video, UK ba foods that are banned in the US and lungs was mentioned. <laughs> and this guy is like defending. I mean, it's not my decision. I don't really care, but... Another comment I have to say, he sounds exactly like Shrek, which is the Scottish accent. I really like the Scottish accent. It's pretty, I like it a lot, it's funny. Everybody's okay. Um, it's very, it's really well cooked, you know, so the we. He doesn't sound like Shrek, actually. He just sounds Scottish, because <laughs> he's Scottish. But yeah, I like how he, he's pointing out that with the process, how other people cut corners. They don't even cook it fully like how they do it they just mince it cook the lungs they then get once they've been mixed with all the other ingredients it goes into the casing it gets cooked again and then for the consumer to eat it it gets cooked again so, it's very yeah. safe what james is referring to is a 1971 us ban on imported animal lungs that is still in place today but while haggis cannot be imported from scotland there are still some local producers feeding those hungry for haggis across the pond Lungs are cooked for about two hours before being mixed with onions and salt.
Meanwhile, in this other room, spices and oatmeal are measured to then be blended together with gravy and the minced meat. They wouldn't share the full list of spices, but from what we can tell, there may be nutmeg, mace and coriander. It's really Don't say the secret ingredients. <laughs> Very simple. Yeah. It is actually. <laughs> it's just a lot of ingredients. You know, a lot of ingredients. All, all it's, together, it's just so. like making a hot sausage or a, mm -hmm. you know, salami. But you would never like just miss out on any of these ingredients. Oh, if you, you know, yeah, no. no, you wouldn't. If you make haggis without like spices, then it would, nah. Well, nah. <laughs> you need haggis needs spice. Now it's time to encase the haggis. This is done with beef intestine. So this is intestine you use. Yeah, this is this is beef intestine. Um, this is what we call a large bung or the large intestine. Um, there's this this cat this end here is the equivalent of your your appendix. Okay. So it's that part of the gut, and then along here there's a there's a small a small hole. Where is that? There it's there, <laughs> and that's where the large intestine joins the small intestine. Okay. All these casings you would see being used for mortadella, which is. This is, which is what this casing is for, or salami or chorizo. Um, the, the small intestine is, is typically used for salamis for, for, a, for a narrower caliber, yeah. but for haggis, that, that's the casing that we use. And haggis is quite wide. So haggis is very wide. wide. Oh, okay. um, these are uh, 454 gram haggis today, but we do make haggis that are um, 2.3 kilos, so they feed, oh. feed 10 people and they're very wide and very long. And is there a difference in taste as well, you know, at the end? When yes, very good question. Um, yeah, the, 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 like, like real cheese, um, mature cheese, there, there is a, a flavor that comes off the casing that, that gives it a, a more traditional flavor. Okay. It's a more mature flavor. Ugh. The freshly made puddings are punched. I'm not saying haggis is nasty, but it's just the uh, intestine casing. It's hard to, once you know, if I didn't know what it is, it'd be fine. But now that I know it's intestines. Spread out the air as they cook. They will stay in the oven for about an hour and cook Ugh. at 100 degrees Celsius. Oh, wow. Look at that. There's some what the? yellow water coming out. Is this for the spices? Oh, no, that's the, that's the... That's the fat. Oh, okay. So it's not water. No. no. It's, well, some of it's water and some of it's fat. Okay. Wow. Because the, the casing's porous, it's just any, the, some of the fat, the, the moisture within the haggis seeping through. So. Oh, um, oh, yeah, of course there is fat. You know, you should save it. You should make it like foie gras or something. <laughs> All the flavors have been bound together through the cooking process. So you've got the, you've got the, the lamb meat, the beef meat, the oatmeal, the seasoning, the spices, the salt, and, and then in, once it's now been filled into the casing, the casing's now shrunk through the cooking process. It has shrunk so much, they yeah. just come back like half the size. The haggis need about four hours to cool down before going to get vacuum packed. But these are not ready to be eaten yet, because um, they, they need to be heated up again after they're in the bags. That's what the consumer would do. Right. But in, in the old days, when we used to run the butcher shop, back when my grandfather was running the business, if there was ever a first haggis, the guys would take it away and eat it. Because it's, okay. at this, uh, right now, <laughs> the haggis at this stage is so tasty. Is it? Oh, it's oh. fresh and succulent and juicy. Oh no, oh. so we're losing out so much just by no, no, cooking I, it afterwards. No, you, you, have it, you have it the same thing again when you heat it, but right now, there's nothing nothing beats the taste of fresh haggis and the recipe has only changed once in 67 years wow. uh, we changed the blend of oatmeal um, my father um, received a letter from a, 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 a very well-renowned food critic called Derek Cooper and he said John I think your haggis is fantastic but I think it could it, you could improve it um, you might want to consider changing the blend of oatmeal and dad did sent a haggis back to Derek and Derek replied going perfection and we've never changed it since. Haggis isn't Scottish. Um, haggis in one way or another exists in every culture around the world. So 
a salami is a bit like a haggis. Um, Mosia is a bit like a haggis. Um, uh, fajuada in a stew in Brazil is a bit like a haggis. A haggis is a dish made with the bits and pieces that aren't whole muscle meat. So it's the original boil in the bag, you know, um, because you're, you're just using all these bits and pieces and you, and you make something that's very tasty and very affordable. James isn't kidding about it being in almost every culture. In Czech cuisine, they have vitrinica. In Romanian cuisine, they have toba. Ando yet in France. They're all made from bits and pieces of animal meat and encased to boil. Not only they are tasty, but they're also an economical way to use as much of the animal as possible. Despite the style of cooking being everywhere, Scots have a unique passion for haggis. There is even one night a year devoted to haggis, which acts <laughs> as a sort of unofficial national holiday. It's called Burns Night and is named after Robert Burns, Scotland's national poet. A Burns supper traditionally kicks off with an address to the haggis. To show you how seriously they take it, I'm going to play James reciting the entire poem, while I also show you a collection of people across Scotland acting it out. Okay, take it away, James. So to a haggis. All right, hold on. One thing I have to say, um, I really like like the family story, just about the factory and stuff. And I like how he like related it to something bigger than just just <laughs> just um the like where he was presenting the video and made it like haggis transcends nations, you know, it's everywhere. I I don't know, it's just that was really interesting. I think he he did a great job with the whole tour and everything. But what is this? Robert Burns fair for your honest sonsy face. Great chieftain ah the pudding race. I bin them all, ye tack your place. Ten strike per thin. Will are ye worthy of a grace as langs my air? They're going in pressure. There ye go. Your hardies, like a distant hill. Your pin would help to mend a mill in time o' need. And through your pores <laughs> the dews <laughs> distill. Like amber feet. His knife, see rustic labour decked. And cut ye up with ready and then, oh, what a glorious sip. Warm, reeking, rich. Then horn for horn. They stretch and strive. You'll tack the hindmost on they drive. Till all their wheels <laughs> told kites below. Bro. Are bent. Light drums. And all take madness like to uh, <laughs> ride. We thank it hums. Our his French a ragu. A rollio, twould star a sou, or fricassee would mack a spew. We perfect scunner. Would then we sneer him scorn for you? One sack of dinner. Poor deal, see him bow his trash. As feckless as a withered rash. His spindle shank and good whip lash. His knee a net through bloody flannel fields to dash. <laughs> oh, how unfair. But mark the <laughs> rustic haggis fed. The trembling earth resounds his tread. Clapping his wally neva blade, he'll mack it whistle. And leagues the names and heads will sned like taps of thistle. Ye poors, quack mack mine kind your care. And dish them out their billow fare. All Scotland wants nae skinkin' wear. The jobs and luggies. But if you wish, her grateful prayer. Gee her a haggis. What the heck? Oh, yeah, that, that's actually pretty, I like that tradition, that's funny. I'm not gonna lie, I, I did not understand much of what they were saying, but just from the images and stuff, it's like sarcasm, it's funny. Cause they're like joking about the haggis being like this holy thing. I mean, to them, it, it probably is. That thing looks. I need to try this. This it has a lot of hype around it. It seems. I mean, this must be good. Let me know if you guys like haggis in the comments below. Rate it from one to ten. But yeah, I'm gonna definitely have to try haggis. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. <laughs>